G'day guys and welcome, my name is Michael and I am the Dead Aussie Gamer, here to share with you my tips, tricks, ideas and strategies for playing and running tabletop role playing games. Now today's Monster Spotlight, we aren't going to be looking at one particular type of monster, but instead we are going to be exploring the idea of unknown monsters, unique monsters that you have created or changed to suit your role playing adventure. Now, any table you're going to be on, you will most likely find players who have at least some understanding of general monsters in RPGs. You know, people who know that trolls hate fire and acid, who know that chopping the head off a hydra is a terrible idea. These players are great because they have a very firm and fixed understanding of the RPG world. This knowledge can fuel your immersion, can really help them get into the mood of being a part of this fantastic world you're creating. But at the same time, it can also be a double-edged sword. That player might feel as though there is nothing unique, nothing special, nothing challenging or different about their campaign. Well, there are some things that you as a GM can do to help throw a curveball to these players and make them get that sense of excitement from seeing and experiencing a whole new type of monster. That may not necessarily be as new as that player might think. So the first and easiest thing to do if you wanted to create your own unique monster is take the existing monster, take a concept of an encounter that you want to run, and then change the physical appearance of that monster. Let's take, for example, um, an owlbear. An owlbear is a tall, bear-like creature with, the, with feathers over its body and the head of an owl. Uh, this immense and vicious uh, carnivorous creature tends to be quite a brutal combatant, you know, one that sort of grabs hold of people, claws at them, you know, things like that. Your typical bear kind of thing. Now, instead of doing it as an owl bear, you could change the aesthetics. Instead of it having the head of an owl, maybe it's got the head of a wildebeest. And instead of the uh, arms of a bear, maybe it's got gorilla arms. And maybe it's quadruped, so it's actually got four legs instead of the, the two that it stands on. All of a sudden, by changing the aesthetics, but using the same statistics as your owlbear, you can create the sense that this is a new creature. When we have our players who are experienced encounter a scenario, they might often see a, see a creature and go, okay, cool, this is what we need to do. They might form another opinion and go, oh, this is this kind of creature, this is how it'll behave. But if you throw them the aesthetics of something they've never seen before, well, now it becomes a different game. It becomes a game of figuring out what the hell this is. Oh, can I make a knowledge check? Oh, um, does it do this when I do this? Ooh, oh, maybe do I have any of this in my pocket? I'm going to do this instead. This is the magic that I think a lot of experienced players lose out on. So changing the aesthetics can really help revitalize that. Uh, another good example, um, some aesthetic changes need to have follow-up. Like I just mentioned the quadruped gorilla armed thing. If you make it a quadruped, you need to know the rules that surround making it a quadruped. Such as, for example, that it gets a plus four bonus against trip attempts because of how big it is. It also has an improved carry capacity because of its stability on its legs. Little things like that um, for certain games are important. But really, when it comes down to it, aesthetics are just that. They're aesthetics. They're there to just make the thing feel different. You don't need to come up with all the nitty-gritty rules around it. You just need to know that your players are having fun, having a great time, and you have used something that is balanced mechanically with what you're trying to achieve. And the creature entry generally is going to be balanced, no matter which game system you use. So that's aesthetics. That's a, that's a great one for aesthetics. The next way you can make a very unique uh, character or unique creature is by applying templates. Now, doing aesthetics, simple, easy. You just need to write what this thing looks like and that'll throw your players off. Templates are a lot more tricky. They require a lot of prep, a lot of research, and definitely, definitely, definitely a fair bit of playtesting. Now, I have a golden Bible that I use whenever I apply templates, and that is, of course, the uh, Advanced Bestiary by Green Ronin. This I stand by 100%. Um, now, this is a Pathfinder um, kind of um, third-party book, 
But that being said, the ideas within it can still be applied to any kind of game. Uh, if I turn to a random page now, I see I have here uh, a drider. So I can create a drider of any type of creature. Now that gets me thinking. It's like, okay, cool. So what does a drider get? Well, a drider gets additional natural armor because of its carapace. Okay, cool. So whatever I apply this to, let's say, again, we'll take the owlbear. Let's make an owlbear drider. So we'll make its armor a little bit higher. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, it doesn't get any extra attacks because it's, you know, an owlbear. So it'll still have its claws and stuff like that. Um, it will have a poisonous bite. Well, yeah, let's give it a mandible so the beak kind of splits in half. So we have poison here. Cool, cool. We have that. Uh, some spell-like abilities, because, you know, driders generally get that. But you know what? Because it's such an animalistic creature, let's get rid of the spells. So no spells for that. Um, ability point increases and stuff like that. If this is an appropriate game, absolutely. If it's not, like let's say I'm doing this for a 5th ed game, I'd be like, okay, cool. So this is going to boost its dexterity and its intelligence more than anything else. So let's give them a little bit of a boost. Uh, bonuses to stealth. Easy done. Gets advantage on stealth checks. And uh, spider climb. So it's actually got a climb speed. Easy done. And all of a sudden, I've turned my Albert into a unique, different encounter. But once I've done this, easy enough to say that. Because I, I mean, I literally did it there in a few seconds, right? Easy enough to do. But you won't know the repercussions of upgrading through templates until you test it out. Now, the books will always have an idea. They'll say, oh yes, it's a, it's a CR plus two, or oh yes, it's a CR plus three. Look, I stand by the CR system. They generally work. 99.9% .9 of the time, if you know and understand how CR works, it'll work. But, and I say this distinctly with a but, there are some interactions that go between a template and the base um, creature that synergize way too well. And you want to always test it out. Have a stable of a few like pre-generated characters. No matter what game you're playing, you're bound to find a fair few. Throw the monster out against a pre-generated version of your players. Or even if you are you know, got enough foresight, ask your players to submit their characters so that you can... Um, play test it yourself and just run a couple of rounds see how it goes if you open in the round and you go well two of my players are dead maybe i should dial back this template a little bit or maybe i should use a different combination of things templates are absolutely fantastic and i wholeheartedly stand by them to this day the best encounters i've ever fought have been monsters with various templates that have been applied all right now, the last thing that you want to do when you look at unique monsters is names. Now, I know that sounds very cheesy, very corny, and doesn't really seem very helpful. But if you name your creature, you'll often find that that will lead you into a lot more of that narrative mystery. Because creating a good mystery is what making a unique monster is all about. It's all about making something that your players don't know what it is. Your players need to discover what it is. And that all starts with a good name. Something like, uh, let's say, the, um, the Bivinac. What the hell is a Bivinac? I've never heard of it before. Make a knowledge check. Okay, cool. You make a, you make, you know, you do your role. You've heard that a Bivnak is uh, actually a dark forested creature that lives in the blighted forests. Uh, it is a spider-like creature that seems to have an immense body, a uh, bear-like form, uh, resting atop an immense thorax. In addition, it has the head of a desiccated, um, uh, a desiccated raven. And it uh, is well known for snatching people up and dragging them into the webs and devouring them whole. All of a sudden, you then build up this, this atmosphere. Well, what are its strengths? What are its weaknesses? Well, Bivinax aren't actually very common, so you don't really know what its strengths and weaknesses are. You just know that it is an ambush predator. <gasps> oh, no, that's, that's dangerous. Well, what should we do? Well, we need this supplies, that supplies, you know. We need to prepare for this because this could be what it has and this could be what it has. 
this gameplay is exactly what you want from your players when you play with unique monsters. You want them to be exploring. You want them to you want them to want to know more about your monster. Cuz once they're invested, then you're in. You know, you can pretty much do anything at that point. You if you just find the need to sort of spring something out because let's say your players are too powerful and you want something to have a bit more crunch to it. Templates are good for that too, I, I guess. But don't just throw something with a template out there. Don't just sort of go, oh, well, my players are really powerful. I'm going to give it the advanced template, the giant template, the undead template, the dread template, and then just go, yep, cool, you open the door, there is an undead onyx um, giant of, um, you know, a death knight. And, you know, at that point, your players will probably resent you for that because it's just like, oh, this thing is just needlessly difficult. We don't know anything about it. It's just here to die. Why are we even fighting it? It's just, it's a time investment. It's a time sink. So have a good story. Have a good mystery. Have them have that opportunity to sort of learn more about the creature and do something interesting, you know. Don't um, don't just double down on strength after strength after strength. Don't make a shadow template shadow, you know. Go with unique things, things that people most likely wouldn't have seen before. Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Go check us out on all our different social medias. Um, if you want to support the Dead Aussie Gamer, head on over to our Patreon channel. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of really cool and uh, awesome things there. We're going to be releasing a whole bunch of NPCs for you guys to use. Uh, I think we've got pre-generated D&D 5th edition characters coming out uh, soon. Uh, in addition, we've got some maps. we got some... Uh, tutorial videos on how to be a good performer and of course we have uh, entrance ways into games where you can play on some of my tables so uh without any further ado thank you again and uh till i catch you guys next time game hard or die trying see us.